Professor Catherine Barnard, uh, Professor of European and Employment Law at the University of Cambridge, and also a senior fellow at UK and Changing Europe. Thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure to be here. I mean, I, I am going to go from macro to micro, incre inc incredibly micro. I'm going to Great Yarmouth. Great Yarmouth, for those of you who don't know, is a seaside resort uh, on the east coast of England. And it's where we have been doing work looking at uh, the experience of EU migrant workers coming to the UK to do low-paid, low-skilled work in mainly chicken factories and farms in and around the town. And I should say I've been doing this work with my wonderful colleague Fiona Costello, who's in the room, um, who um, has actually been living in Great Yarmouth, although there it is. We have been living, or she has been living, it's a royal we, um, uh, but she has been living in St Peter's Road, um, which is uh, in the heart of Great Yarmouth. It's not the best of conditions, indeed it's pretty run down, pretty deprived part of town. And she was living in an HMO, a house of multiple occupation, with um, migrant workers to try and get a better understanding of what life is like. In addition, we've been working with a charity called Gyros, uh, which has been providing support to migrant workers. And you can see that HMO where she was living um, is really not safe, which is pretty typical of um, the situation in and around um, Great Yarmouth in these HMOs. That was the room she was living in. It's somewhat misleading because although the sign of the radiator there suggests there was heating, there wasn't. No heating, no uh, Wi-Fi. Conditions are pretty grim and the house was in a pretty poor state. Now the reason I'm telling you all of this is because what we've been trying to document is free movement experiences both pre-Brexit um, during the transition and then post-Brexit. And what we have seen is that in Great Yarmouth, um, it's a town which sort of reflects what Donald's saying. It's one in ten of the population in around Great Yarmouth are EU migrant workers. And in the central wards where the house I've just shown um, is situated, probably one in four. And I think, and I hear what you say about a loose connection but what we see between leave voting and the arrival of EU migrant workers, but what we see is there's been a significant change in the town and indeed Great Yarmouth had the fifth highest leave vote in the country. Now, the experiences um, of people were not all unremittingly bad, as that quote um, shows, but in fact... What we've been looking at is their experiences at work and their experiences in housing. Now, as far as housing is concerned, a lot of the EU migrants came from Latvia, Lithuania, and they were brought to the UK via uh, agencies who put them into caravans or into HMOs, overcrowded HMOs. And their experiences when they first arrived were pretty terrible. And indeed, there's some pretty gruelling, grim accounts of their experiences when they were shoved into houses with people they didn't know and what happened to particularly the women at night. And if the women tried to leave the accommodation that they'd been given by the agency, they had to carry on paying because this was part of the agency's packaging. Now... It wasn't just accommodation, both when they first arrived, but subsequently the HMO that Fiona had been living in shows an example of just how bad things were um, in terms of accommodation. But it was also employment. Now, again, what we see in the interviews we've done and in the Gyros database is that conditions in chicken factories in particular are really grim. Repeated stories of the cold, uh, repeated stories of being um, shouted at. Anna there um, uh, was a primary school teacher in Romania before she came to the UK. And she found this harassment, the shouting, the bullying, some of the most upsetting um, of the experiences. There was also real issues too about people being refused to go to the loo to take toilet breaks with all of the uh, health consequences that um, flowed from that. So the experiences at work, long shifts in chicken factories, 
dressed head to toe in PPE because of the um, uh, health um, uh, situation, particularly during COVID, made life incredibly, working life for them, incredibly difficult indeed. And of course, Brexit came. Um, it came as a shock to a lot of the EU migrant vote, workers who, of course, weren't able to vote in the referendum. But of course, they could feel the uh, uh, change in attitude. Virtually everyone we interviewed had at some stage or other experienced go home rhetoric at a minimum and uh, greater abuse than that um, in the case of some. So they felt othered even from the beginning, even before the EUSS um, system that um, Charlotte was talking about was introduced, the European Settlement um, Scheme Programme. Now, of course, they had to apply for EUSS and the government's um, campaign um, showed it would be as easy to apply for EUSS as it was to make a cup of tea. And that probably was right for um, high skilled, highly digitally literate people who had expensive mobile phones. This was not the case for the cohort that we are working with, a lot of whom did not have uh, mobile phones at all, or if they did, they had the old Nokia style phones, which of course you can't uh, take um, screenshots of. And furthermore, if you look at the profile of the clients that Jairos, the charity we've been working with, um, uh, has, you can see that 70% of them rate their English language skills as limited or very limited indeed. This has got consequences going forward. We also see that they, a very large number of them say they have no digital skills whatsoever, no IT skills. Um, and you can see that 85% rate their IT skills as less than 3 out of 10. The other thing that we see is, um, contrary to the usual expectation that migrants are young and fit and healthy, what we're seeing in Great Yarmouth is an ageing population of EU migrants, not altogether surprising because the free movement tap has been turned off. But it does mean that these are ageing people um, with the health problems that go with ageing. The other issue that we see is the um, nationalities. Romanian is now the largest group um, in around Great Yarmouth. Um, we also, there is also a large uh, Portuguese population, including a large di diaspora po uh, population, um, people coming from primarily um, the uh, Africa from um, former col Portuguese colonies who have Portuguese nationality, which also raises a number of cultural issues um, for um, the town. What we see too is because EUSS is the gateway to all sorts of benefits, as Charlotte was saying, if you're struggling with EUSS, um, then of course it's going to make it very difficult for you to get access to the healthcare system and to benefits. So what are the issues going forward? The issues going forward are that um, of course EUSS is not a one-stop shop. Once you've applied, um, if you've got pre-settled status and a large number of the cohort we're working with got pre-settled status because they weren't able to produce the paperwork to show that they actually were entitled to settled status, which you get after five years, you have got to upgrade. Now, the consequences of not upgrading are now no longer apparently as serious as they were before following the uh, high, recent High Court decision, but it's not clear what the consequences are of not upgrading. Furthermore, um, you've got to keep managing your status online. You've got to be able to update your phone number, your address. And these people, of course, are, um, have fairly itinerant lives. And if you have no digital skills, then, of course, this makes it much harder to keep upgrading your status online. There's a particular problem that we've seen in amongst our cohort, which is the role of advice sharks who have charged people for EUSS, even though it's a free um, uh, application, and invariably charge each time you need to access your EUSS. It's a fantastic stream of money for the advice shark, but we see some very dodgy and to the point of criminal practices engaged by, in by some of the advice sharks. 
Finally, as you can see, they're engaged in low-paid work. They are still engaged in low-paid work. And one of the sad things for us is looking across the spectrum of time from 2004 to 2022, the working conditions that they are having to endure have not improved in that time. Finally, there is a sense of being still very unwelcome. There is a stark divide between those who live um, uh, in the town who are local residents and those who are EU migrants living in these HMOs um, in the centre of town. There is very little bridge building between the two communities and this is going to take a long time to heal. Finally, Thanks to the SRC and UK and Changing Europe, we are carrying on looking at some of these issues, but we're spreading our wings beyond the marvels of Great Yarmouth, a place which I do recommend you go to, despite the uh, pictures I've shown. The beaches are fantastic. The hippodrome's even better. Um, but to look at some, whether some of these issues are being replicated elsewhere in East Anglia. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.